Hey guys, this video is a tutorial on how to install the EcoFlow Independence Power Kit. And you're about to see how easy it is to install in your own van on your own. Today we're installing the 10 kilowatt hour Independence Kit, but the process is the same for any other sizes. Here's everything that comes with these EcoFlow Power Kits. First off, you get the batteries themselves. This is a 10 kilowatt hour kit, so you have two of these large 5 kilowatt hour batteries the power hub that connects all the components together, the smart distribution panel that connects all your wiring to power everything, the display screen to control the whole system, all the wires you need to connect everything, and an easy to follow quick start guide that once you look at it, you'll barely need to watch this video. And all this here comes with a five year warranty through EcoFlow. All right, we're gonna get started with some layout considerations here. I built this box here to custom fit this 10 kilowatt hour kit so that it goes underneath the fixed bed in this build. If you want to make one yourself, I actually filmed the whole process and that video is linked in the description below. First thing to think about for the layout of the system here is getting these giant batteries to fit in a sturdy spot. Everything else can usually be built off of their placement. Make sure to give enough room for the mounting brackets to fit on those batteries. This box is 12 and a quarter inches deep on the inside. Second, it's very important that the power hub gets enough space for airflow. EcoFlow actually includes this template to show how much airflow space to account for around the hub. It requires four inches above, below, and to the right of it. It also requires two inches to the left, but in this box I installed air vents to the left side of it so it can be closer than that. And in this particular location, the smart distribution panel wouldn't work here because it needs space behind it for lots of wires to be fed through. And you can see the wheel well is kind of in the way here. So here's our final layout and now we can get started mounting things and cutting holes to run wires. First, I'll mount the smart distribution panel. You can mount it onto the wall so it's protruding, but I'm going to go ahead and recess it to give the power hub extra space for airflow. Plus, I think it looks better. Now we can use this template to visualize the holes that we need to cut to run some wires. We cut one down here for the solar and alternator charging wires, a big one over here to run most of the big bulky connectors, and one over here that'll be behind the batteries to run their wires. A two and a half inch hole saw is a great tool to have for this. Then I'll go ahead and clean up those hard edges with a round over bit in my router. Alternatively, you could just use a file to dull those edges. Now we can get that template back out and we can mark where we need to drill pilot holes for the power hub mount. All the screws and hardware are labeled very well in this kit, by the way. They make it pretty damn easy. Once you have the brackets mounted on the power hub, you drop these little hooks onto the rack that you mounted onto the wall. Then you can secure the rest of the brackets. Before mounting the smart distribution panel, you should remove the plastic port covers where you'll be feeding your wires through. Here I realized I have a sharp plywood edge that'll be getting in the way of my wiring, so I went ahead and gave it the same round over treatment. Mounting the rest of the kit here is actually pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions, let me know. And you probably want to plug in this battery while you can before it gets covered by the other one. Call that one a stupid pro tip from experience. Now we can start running the rest of the wires to get them in place where they'll live. Don't worry, they're all labeled for exactly what they'll be used for and what port they plug into. Now let's go ahead and connect the AC and DC wiring to the smart distribution panel. For the 12 volt DC out wires, use these screws. Then all you gotta do is land the red positive wire where it says positive and then the black negative wire where it says negative. Easy as that. Now for the AC wires, use these screws. Screw the black line wire labeled L on the terminal labeled L and then do the same with the other corresponding labeled wires. Here's how to wire a 12 volt device to the DC connections on this panel. These are the wires that go to the max air fan in this build. Strip off about half an inch of insulation and then open the clamp connector. Then you just stick the wire in and close it. Same concept here for the AC wires. These are actually the wires that go to the air conditioner in the van. Quick tip on these wires, by the way, cut them so that the ground wire is longer than the hot and neutral so you can route all of them easier. And I'm connecting these to the white 30 amp circuit breaker here since the air conditioner will draw so much power. 
These here are your CAN bus connectors. They allow the different elements of the system to talk to each other to keep everything regulated and controlled. Take one of them, it doesn't matter which, and plug it into this port here, and the other side plugs into the power hub here. There are two ports and they both work, it doesn't matter which. Now this panel closes up nice and tidy with this panel cover that you can put labels on so that you know which devices your breakers and fuses go to. Mounting the display unit here is pretty easy. Here, this uh, piece of scrap plywood will stand in for our wall today. Use this little mount to mark out screw holes and a hole where your other CAN bus wire will go. Plug it into the back here and then slide the console down onto the mount. And then plug the other end of that CAN bus wire into the power hub. Now let's install the shore power plug. Here we're using the Furion 30 amp shore power plug and that's also linked in the description because it doesn't come with the kit. Start with measuring at least twice and then drill a small pilot hole where you want it to go. Then using a two and a half inch hole saw, cut out where you want the plug to go. Going slow and using cutting oil is the move here. You don't want it getting too hot. Now go ahead and deburr it with a deburring tool or a file. And you'll know you did a good enough job when you don't cut your finger. Yep, yeah, just like, just like that right there. Needs more file. I should probably tell you not to do that. Now go ahead and paint the edges of the exposed metal for rust prevention. Now, while making sure to keep the plug level and square, drill some pilot holes to mount it. Now we can feed things through and make sure you put on the backing parts or else you'll just have to undo everything that you do here. Now we just land each wire according to the colors and then tighten the clamping screws. Screw on the strain relief here, tight but not too tight. Then go ahead and screw in the whole plug using stainless steel sheet metal screws. Make sure you do not use zinc screws here. Those will rust pretty quickly. Now the most intimidating part here is installing the alternator charging wires. But I'll show you guys how to do it fairly easy. Now we're gonna go ahead and install a 100 amp mega fuse on the positive wire. If that thing ever blows, you'll be real glad that it's there. Cut a hole in the protective wire housing while being really careful not to damage the actual wire insulation. If you do damage the wire insulation, you'll have to cut that part out. Go ahead and cut out a section of the positive wire where the fuse will be. You can strip those ends and crimp on some six gauge ring terminals that'll fit on your fuse. EcoFlow actually provides these, but they didn't fit the fuse that I bought, so I had to go ahead and pick up some anyways. Then you screw on those ring terminals going flat washer, lock washer, then the nut. Now remove all the van panels that you want to hide these wires behind. You can see I put it under the floor here straight into the battery cavity. You can go ahead and land that positive end onto any positive screw here that doesn't already have a fuse on it. And I cut out a little notch on this cover to go around the new wire. The negative side can be landed anywhere on the negative terminal. Now you can button all that up and you're done with it. All right, now it's time to power up the system for the first time. Make sure your two CAN bus connectors are already plugged into the power hub. Then plug in the DC out connector and the AC out connector. Now plug in your batteries and then hold down the power button for three seconds. Once the system is running, you can plug in your inputs from left to right. The alternator charger, solar charger, and short power. Before you turn on the AC and DC power, make sure you don't have any loose ends that'll get energized. The only things we have wired in right now are the max air fan and the air conditioner. To turn on the AC and DC power, press these little toggle buttons. Now to test out the max air fan, Looks like the DC power works and you can see how much power it's pulling here. To test out the air conditioner, I need to flip the breaker on.
and it looks like the air conditioner still pulls too much power on startup for this uh, system, even with the 30 amp breaker. That's an easy fix. After installing a soft start, it works like a charm. That initial pull of starting up that compressor just takes a ton of power. A soft start lowers that initial pull and eases the whole system up to speed. You can see that once it's running, this air conditioner pulls about 1200 watts. And with that cycling on and off overnight, this 10 kilowatt hour battery system can handle that all night long. Coming out nice and cold. Whew, needed that. These EcoFlow power kits are now available to purchase on my website. If you want to get 10% off, use the discount code 10 off. On some of those, I should get you at least like a thousand bucks off as a thank you to for coming off of YouTube here. Hope this video was a huge help. If you have any questions, hit, hit me up down in the comments. I'll try my best to answer all of them. My name is Ryan Michaels with Kokomo Vans, and I'll see you guys in the next one.